And I think we're now going to go to a question from, uh, from, from Ukraine. Thank you, Prime Minister. Daria Kaliniuk. Um, I had anti-corruption action center from Ukraine. I, I passed the border a couple of days ago. I'm from Kiev. Most of my family, uh, most of my team members are still in Ukraine, in Kiev, in Lviv. Uh, a woman uh, from uh, my team is now in Bila Tserkva, and she is there with two kids, and uh, Russian military is over there, and she is so much afraid that she will be shot. Kharkiv, the city where I was studying, was bombarded today, fully, the downtown square. So you're talking about the stoicism of Ukrainian people, but Ukrainian women and Ukrainian children are in deep fear because of bombs and missiles which are going from the sky. And Ukrainian people are desperately asking for the West to protect our sky. We are asking for the no-fly zone. We are saying response that it will trigger World War III. But what is the alternative, Mr. Prime Minister, to observe how our children are, instead of, mis instead of uh, planes, are protecting NATO from the missiles and bombs? What's the alternative for the no-fly zone? We have planes here, we have air defense system in Poland, in Romania. NATO has this air defense. At least this air defense could shield the Western Ukraine so that these children with women could come to the border. It's impossible now to cross the border. There are 30 kilometers of lines. Imagine crossing the border with a baby or with two children. I'm so glad that Samantha Power is coming here to the border from the Polish side. Let her come to the border from the Ukrainian side and see that. Britain guaranteed our security under Budapest Memorandum. So you're coming to Poland. You're not coming to Kiev, Prime Minister. You're not coming to Lviv because you are afraid. Because NATO is not willing to defend. Because NATO is afraid of the World War III. But it is already started. And these are Ukrainian children who are there taking the hit. You're talking about more sanctions, Prime Minister. But Roman Abramovich is not sanctioned. He's in London. His children are not in the bombardments. His children are there in London. Putin's children are in Netherlands, in Germany, in mansions. Where are all these mansions seized? I don't see that. I see that my family members, that my team members are saying that we are crying. We don't have where to rob. Well, this is what is happening, Prime Minister. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, for your questions. And, and thank you for, for getting here today. And I'm, I'm glad that you, you have been able to, to get here. And uh, look, I just want to, to say that I'm acutely conscious that there is not enough that we can do uh, to, as, the, as the UK government uh, to help in the way that you want. And I've got to be honest about that. And when you talk about the, the no-fly zone, uh, as I said to Volodymyr uh, Zelensky, I, I think a, a couple of times, uh, unfortunately, the implication of, of that is that the, uh, the UK and, uh, would be engaged in, in shooting down uh, Russian planes, uh, would be engaged in direct combat uh, with Russia. That's not something uh, that uh, we can do or that we've, uh, that we've envisaged. And I think the consequences of that would be uh, truly very, very difficult to, uh, to control. What we can do is all the things that we are uh, doing already and uh, providing as much help and support to the Ukrainians as we, as we can. And as, as I said to you earlier on, the UK was the first uh, uh, European country to offer military assistance. Uh, also uh, doing everything we can to tighten the economic uh, noose around the Putin regime. And, and we were amongst the very first to put that package together. And uh, I have to, to tell you, I think that it will work. I think that Vladimir Putin's venture is doomed uh, to fail. Uh, and I think that uh, it will be extremely difficult for him to continue on the path that he, he is on. But in the meantime, as you, as you rightly say, there is going to be a, a period of, of suffering for the people of Ukraine uh, for which Putin and Putin alone is responsible. He's taken a decision that I think many people around the world find absolutely uh, inexplicable as well as inexcusable. And uh, it will take time, I'm afraid, for us to, to come through this period. In, in the, all we can do in the meantime is help people like your your, your, your crew and, uh, and your, your, uh, your family to, uh, to, to get out, to get to safety, 
uh, help them uh, with all the humanitarian support that we can provide, help them uh, to come to the UK, uh, and uh, we certainly will. But I, I cannot pretend to you that this is going to be something that the UK can fix uh, by military means, and I think it would be wrong of me to do so. But what I will say is that I think that this, uh, this whole uh, misadventure by Vladimir Putin has raised questions now about uh, the security of, of Europe and what we do. And I think it was in, uh, entirely reasonable of Vladimir Zelensky to, uh, to ask, for instance, for, uh, for EU membership. And I think that NATO will have to think much more about uh, some of the, uh, the ways in which we think about, uh, about European security in the future. Because clearly, uh, if, uh, there are, if Putin can attack uh, Ukraine, in a way that is unprovoked, uh, a, a completely innocent country, uh, then that has big implications uh, for the world and for the security of, of other countries as well. And that's why, amongst other things, uh, the UK is, is intensifying our support, uh, not just for, for Poland, uh, but for the Baltic countries uh, and for all NATO's uh, eastern frontier. And if, if Putin thinks he's going to get uh, less NATO, he's going to push back on NATO as a result of this action, he is going to be gravely disappointed. All that's happening as a result of what he is doing is that he is strengthening the resolve, not just of the Ukrainians, but the resolve of the West uh, as well. 